Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Recently, we got a very interesting question that uh, I think is a good teachable moment and uh, can spark some really interesting discussion, which I love. The question is, if more battleships had been used in the 80s and 90s, like the Iowas, would they have all been turned into museums too? So, the uh, prompt for this question is there, there were two other Iowa-class battleships under construction, Illinois and Kentucky. Neither one were completed. Uh, there was also a whole nother class of battleships designed after the Iowas, the Montanas, of which there were supposed to be five, and none of those were laid down. Uh, additionally, the North Carolina and South Dakota class battleships were relatively new when decommissioned and yet were never reactivated. If any of those other battleships had been reactivated, or, well, why limit it to battleships? The Alaska-class large cruisers, if any of them had been reactivated and used into the uh, 80s and 90s, then put back in the reserve fleet, would they have all been preserved as museum ships too? So in a different video, we've talked about, you know, some of the things that lead to ships being preserved as museums. And uh, the Iowas are unique in that all four completed examples of the class are preserved. That has only happened in one instance. However, the Iowa class are some of the most recent ships to be turned into museums. Right at the end of what was a uh, maybe half century race to get museum ships. Basically from 1948, when the first permanent modern museum ship is opened in the United States, Texas, up until about 2012, when Iowa is turned into a museum ship, you see lots of ships, mostly World War II era, uh, being turned into museum ships all over the country and all over the world. This goes hand in hand with the United States culturally in general, transitioning from a production-based economy to a tourism-based economy. So the same time period that sees us going from one to the other, uh, while we still have this cultural memory of World War II as this, this great struggle against evil, we see a ton of these relics of that conflict being turned into museums. And therefore driving a new economy of bringing tourism to areas. Uh, and then when the Iowa's, the last of the World War II era warships still around, um, are all turned into museums, we see future museum ship efforts, like the effort to turn some of the supercarriers like Kennedy or Saratoga into museum ships, all uh, have failed so far. There are debates in the museum ship community of will there ever be another museum ship created? Yeah, there, there definitely will be. But what, what circumstances will have to happen? Will we have to get into another first class shooting war to have a ship that is considered to be nationally significant? Will the right set of circumstances need to come about? It's hard to say, I don't have a crystal ball. So back to the actual question. Illinois and Kentucky, let's say that they are completed after World War II. Uh, they are similar enough to the Iowas that all the times when the Iowas are brought back, they are brought back also. Or any of the other ships I mentioned for that matter. In addition to the Iowas, the United States decides we want more uh, battleships in service. So we're modernizing the South Dakotas or the Montanas or the Alaskas, whatever the case is and repeatedly bringing them back. So these are all around in mothballs in the 80s, or some number of them are all around in mothballs in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, there's an argument to be made that these ships are historically significant enough to be brought back as museums. But the question is, where? What city decides that they want to improve their local economy by bringing in a museum that, that is also a ship that re requires a lot of investment and maintenance, much more so than a traditional landside museum. I always sort of got lucky. Well, battleships, for one, uh, really capture the imagination. 
as I'm sure you all watching understand. Um, battleships capture the imagination in a huge way. And because they're named after states, they have an entire state's backing, which is why the majority of battleships are preserved as museums in their home state. Illinois and Kentucky, I don't see you getting a 38-foot draft Iowa-class battleship uh, to either of those states. So much like Missouri, Iowa, or Wisconsin, it is unlikely that they would end up there. So how did those ships get preserved as museums? There is an argument to be made that Missouri is the most historically significant surviving battleship. Uh, the, the idea of keeping her as a museum ship and opening her in Pearl Harbor near the Arizona Memorial uh, was, a, was a really good one, and I don't think it surprises anyone. So that, that's sort of the outlier. Wisconsin and uh, Iowa, however, uh, are, are a different story. They're as historically significant as the other Iowas, for sure, but uh, how did they end up where they are? Wisconsin's story is really interesting. She was being held in reserve in Norfolk, and uh, she kept getting moved around the piers there at the Navy Yard as other ships were being brought in for dry docking and other things, and that cost money. Uh, so they worked out an agreement with the Nauticus Museum, hey, can we just store this ship at your pier? This area is no longer a shipyard. We have started to turn it into a touristy space with museums. Can we just throw this at your pier and leave it there? And then over the years, well, yeah, while it's here, you can let people on the main deck. Well, you, know, you, you can make it a part of your museum. Yeah, you can open it up as a full museum ship. The Navy is no longer using it. Uh, so, so that's also a really unique case. The ship just happened to be uh, in a major Navy town that did not have any other large sized museum ship. Uh, and so that was also turning into a huge tourist destination. So that was a no-brainer. Iowa in Los Angeles uh, is also an interesting story. At this point, there are seven other museum battleships, but they're primarily along the East Coast and Gulf Coast. The only West Coast battleship, arguably, would be Missouri out in Pearl Harbor. You've got two West Coast aircraft carriers in San Diego and San Francisco, but you've got another major uh, waterfront city in Los Angeles that did not have a museum battleship. And Iowa, again, was in the mothball fleet in California, so it was relatively easy to get her to Los Angeles and open her up. And again, Los Angeles has a huge tourist industry, and they're trying to drive that industry by opening museums like her. So... Where would you put Illinois and Kentucky? Would some city advocate for acquiring these ships? Because that's what it would take to get them preserved. I don't believe that any of these post-World War II ships would be opened as museums in place of an Iowa. Uh, and there's also a, deb a debate to be made. Uh, Wisconsin was fixed by having the bow of Kentucky put on. If Kentucky is completed, do we even fix Wisconsin? Do we decide in this alternate world that, uh, yeah, we, we need all these ships. We need more than four battleships in the reserve fleet. I think we do. I, I think if we go through the investment of national treasure to build Illinois and Kentucky or Montana or wh whatever the case is to reactivate the South Dakotas during uh, the Korean War and then keep them modernized in reserves as well. Uh, other ships suffered major bow damage, particularly aircraft carriers. Some destroyers were severely damaged in ramming and rather than take parts from other ships, they are rebuilt. It wasn't a significant amount of Wisconsin that was damaged. It wasn't a tremendously difficult thing to replace the bow. It was just much easier to take a completed bow off Kentucky and put it on Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin would have still been repaired. Uh, I don't see any reason why uh, the amount of damage that she sustained would have prevented her
from being retained in mothballs, assuming we're also retaining all of these other vessels. Uh, so yeah, this is a world in which the United States decides we want more than four battleships at any given time. And so these ships are used, in theory, in this world. Uh, and so they've got some significance. But what comes of it? Uh, to me, it seems like the World War II ships have a great argument to be saved, and the other ones do not. Um, the Des Moines class heavy cruisers. They are saved in mothballs and active up into the 80s, and they're even looked at as being reactivated alongside the Iowas or in place of the Iowas carrying Tomahawk cruise missiles. In our world, this doesn't happen, and uh, Des Moines ends up being stripped for parts and then scrapped, and Salem manages to be opened as a museum ship because Quincy, Massachusetts is looking for a um, economic driver. We're sort of 50-50 there. Other museum ships, Newport, Rhode Island, was looking for a supercarrier, and that falls through. Uh, Jacksonville, Florida is looking for a museum ship, and they're still working on it. There's a very good chance that they'll get the highly decorated destroyer Orlick, but they've been working on this for years and having difficulty uh, making it come to pass. Uh, part of the issue is there is now a density of museum ships. I'm gonna leave two links in the description below here. One is to the Historic Naval Ships Association page that has a map of where Hinsa member ships are. And the other is to the museum ships uh, page, which has a link to where all the museum ships are worldwide on a map. So go ahead and look at those maps and see uh, the, the concentration of museum ships. It shouldn't come as a surprise that they're, in, they're primarily in coastal cities around uh, countries, but you'll see they're really close to each other. Uh, and so a, a new museum ship wants to come to the Philadelphia Camden area to open up. Well, that might not sit well with us, the, uh, the Battleship New Jersey Museum. It might not sit well with Independent Seaport that has two museum ships. It might not sit well with the Philadelphia Ship Preservation Guild, which operates a couple of museum ships in Philadelphia. Um, we, we already have ships here, and if you open another ship, is that going to take some of our business by going there. Uh, and there are different schools of thought here. Battleship New Jersey opened as a museum in Camden after there were already ships in Philadelphia. We, we can literally see Olympia from anywhere on the main deck on New Jersey. She's so close to us. There was a lot of discussion about where to take New Jersey when she was being turned into a museum ship. And uh, the two major competing areas were North Jersey and uh, the Camden area. So like the Liberty State Park area in North Jersey, very close to New York City, where they already have uh, the aircraft carrier Intrepid as a major capital ship and somewhere around a dozen other museum ships. They didn't want the competition of another ship drawing people across the Hudson. However, in the Philadelphia area, there were smaller ships, Olympia, Bakuna, Gazella, Jupiter, but no large ship to draw uh, interested people in. So the folks at Independent Seaport, or whatever that institution was called way back when, uh, were interested in having a ship here because it enriches the whole area and might drive visitation for both museums. So there's an argument to be made either way. Um, when the idea of opening a carrier in the uh, Providence or Newport, Rhode Island area came up, that made a bunch of people nervous because you've already got Battleship Cove right in Fall River, Massachusetts. You've got Constitution and Case and Young in Boston. You've got Salem and Quincy. So now you're putting a lot of ships in this very small New England area, large ships, um, so are, are those driving business for each other or are they competing against each other? There are only so many uh, overnights a Boy Scout troop can do in a given year. Are they going to come to Battleship Cove every year or are they going to go to the different ships that are doing it? Hard to say. This is something that's very much debated in the museum ship community. Uh, I don't think there are enough 
places for these uh, museum ships. There, there are certainly a couple of cities. Uh, Bremerton, Washington tried real hard to get the battleship Missouri. There aren't many West Coast capital ships. Uh, so maybe whichever, let's say Illinois is the one that's on the West Coast with Iowa, maybe she gets open in Bremerton. Maybe that causes issues with the destroyer Turner Joy that's already in Bremerton. It's hard to say. Uh, the, the East Coast and the Gulf Coast are pretty dense. Um, I, I don't see too many other cities around here taking a large ship like that. Um, so I do not find it outside of the realm of the possible just because all four Iowas were preserved. If there were six Iowas, I could easily see two of them being sh stripped for parts and then scrapped rather than being preserved. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? I would love to hear your thoughts on everything we just discussed in the comment section down below. Do you think there's room for more museum ships? Do you think Illinois and Kentucky would have been historically significant in their own right to justify it? Uh, do you think the whole class would have been preserved even if the class was larger? Do you think if we built a Montana, someone would have decided, hey, uh, it's better to have a Montana class battleship and three Iowas than four Iowas and no Montana, even though Montana would in theory be less historically significant not serving in World War II. I would love to hear your discussions in the comment section down below. Hi. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from a number of other businesses and viewers like yourselves. Your support allows us to do what we do and we really appreciate it. There's a link in the description if you'd like to continue supporting us. There's also, uh, liking, sharing, and subscribing as a way of supporting us. That lets more people know we're here. The more views we get, the more revenue the channel gets, and that allows the museum to continue operating. So we really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching.